originally domesticated and bred to exterminate wildlife for agricultural profit. Cats kill billions of wild animals each year and have driven multiple species extinct. The more free-ranging cats we have in society, the fewer wildlife we will have, and this has prompted various conservation warnings, cat hunts, and even an ecologist's attempt to poison free-ranging cats herself. Essentially, if we want to keep innocent and diverse species alive and safe from torture and extinction, cats must be kept indoors or on a leash. But even indoors, what do we typically feed cats? Meat. Meat from people taught to corner and kill for a living. People who tend to develop perpetration-induced traumatic stress because of how much suffering and death they cause and people who, as plenty of evidence suggests, frequently get inspired into criminality, murder, and especially rape due to their occupation. Go figure, the job is to overpower terrified toddler-like animals all day. Of course, it is either going to result in trauma or a dangerous level of apathy in many workers. Besides trauma and crime, a demand for meat comes with confining, cutting, grinding, masturbating, raping, burning, electrocuting, suffocating, snapping, and stabbing innocent beings. All this nightmarish standard practice to upkeep one animal. Processing and supplying animal products is also the leading cause of climate change, ocean dead zones, water use, water pollution, deforestation, rainforest destruction, habitat loss, species extinction, and inefficient land use, with around 25% of this total impact coming from meat-based pet foods. So besides trauma, crime, and suffering, and mass slaughter, there's an inflated environmental cost to cats to consider. Lastly, T. gondii is a parasite infecting up to 50% of people worldwide. Considered one of the world's most successful and prevalent parasites, it is derived from cats, cat-contaminated environments, and cat-contaminated animal products. The parasite infects people and most other warm-blooded animals and is described as remarkable in its ability to invade a wide variety of host cells and unique in its ability to access our central nervous system. People can go years without realizing they have this parasite in their brain or nervous system, soaking up folic acid, causing low-grade inflammation and chemical changes, essentially waiting for any opportunities to strike at a compromised immune system. T. Gandhi is a leading cause of foodborne death and is known to cause foidal abnormalities, spontaneous abortions, stillbirths, weaknesses to certain pathogens, flu-like symptoms, eye damage, dopamine elevations, etc. In rodents, the parasite triggers them to feel attracted to cat stimuli and thus the rodent, weak and infected, gets delivered to the cat. Given this mechanism of the parasite to alter attraction and lure prey to its breeding ground, it is questionable whether a similar effect may be happening in humans. To summarize, perpetuating meat-based cats in society means various species continue to get tortured, killed, and driven extinct. Slaughterhouses continue to traumatize people and manifest crime by training psychopaths. Various animals continue to get enslaved, raped, and slaughtered. The leading cause of environmental destruction continues to flourish. A horribly successful cat-exclusive parasite continues to infect up to one in two people including many warm-blooded animals. It is clear we need a solution. Numerous species cause but a fraction of the damage cats cause, yet we wipe them out. Given society's stance on so-called pests, I am entirely consistent in saying that cats should be kept indoors, put on leashes, spayed, neutered, 
and killed when seen outdoors. But even when taking all such precautions, we are left with the root of the problem, the cat's diet. To change the diet is to solve everything fundamentally wrong about cats. A private bug farm could solve a lot of problems, but not all. A source of synthetic meat could, but it's an ideal that may never arrive. The best solution so far would be to fortify plants with the recommended nutrients and acidity found in meat. After all, there's no reason, in theory, why it shouldn't work. And so let's look at the evidence. Researchers examining cats on vegan diets concluded that no abnormalities were detected and cats appeared happy and bright. Researchers tested and found no lower levels of iron, protein, B12, or taurine in cats fed proper vegan diets. Owners commonly report improved skin, coats, shine, odor, stool, breath, and reversals of previous health conditions when feeding their cats fortified plants instead of meat. Like anything, there are reputable sources with great reviews and bad sources with bad reviews. But why would an obligate carnivore do better on a properly formulated vegan diet? One reason is a lack of environmental pollutants and heavy metals that bioaccumulate up the food chain. Toxins are the burden of any secondary consumer, especially in today's day and age, and by giving cats primary consumer benefits enriched with secondary consumer nutrients, we give them a significant reduction in toxins, something similarly shown in vegan humans. A drastic reduction of chemical exposure could explain many of the benefits described in testimonials, that and the fact various common risks found in most cat foods, stuff like prions, pathogens, hormones, antibiotics, 4D meat, ear tags, etc., cannot even be included on a vegan diet, meaning far fewer risks, recalls, and much less incidences of the parasites, like T. Gandhi. Indeed, while it's amazing news that we can fortify plants to save billions of human and non-human lives from suffering and death, and even help stop one of the world's most successful parasites from spreading, many are unwilling to believe it. Why? Because they are too busy attacking unfortified vegan diets, touting textbook definitions of obligate carnivores as if it has anything to do with nutrients synthesized nonviolently inside a lab. Even the most prevalent argument against vegan cat food, which is that plants are alkaline and alkalinity might mean struvite crystals, is a straw man argument against unfortified vegan diets. In short, fortified plants are acidic. You can even check this yourself. And fortified plants contain all essential nutrients. Most importantly, this is seen in practice and research. But if you simply refuse to believe in a fortified vegan diet, I want to know what your solution is to counter all five problems cats present. Unless, of course, you propose we arbitrarily protect this animal at the cost of all others. I personally can't imagine walking into an adoption agency and being presented with two boys and saving the one who, intentionally or unintentionally, naturally or unnaturally, causes an inflated amount of suffering and death. Unless we can fortify plants, what justifies me picking a cat over a more peaceful animal? What justifies me sustaining a cat over many? Personal attachment? Aesthetics? The belief that nature is perfect and that protecting and sustaining this transmogrified, domesticated lion is natural? Should such beliefs really override a matter of suffering, trauma, crime, parasites, and death? 